All right, I'm inside uh, a fishing boat in New Bedford, Massachusetts. The name of the fishing boat is actually called Fisherman. And they installed a the brand new engine and the technician is over there working on it, still putting the final connections before they start it up. The noise is actually a generator over there. And this is the very front section um, of the ship. So it's the bow, and this is where they store all their stuff. That looks like all the engine piping or something. So let's see what kind of shots I can get, but it's really, really loud. So it is what it is. It's a tight working environment, as you can see. So to get photos is interesting. But there's always good shots to be made. If you look, I only have one camera. I usually carry around two, but why? Why not carry two? Well, it's a tight environment, and I know that a longer lens would be really useless here. And uh, that is Pedro Cura. He's the owner of the fishing <laughs> boat. How are you, boss? OK. OK. Everything good? Uh, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's expensive, right? <laughs> so what happened to the other engine? Eight. Don't think. <laughs> it was time for a new one? Yeah. It's 40 years old, another one. Okay. How long have you had the boat? Oh, I buy this boat in 82. 82? Yes. And it still looks pretty good. Yeah, you know, you need it. Spend some, I, I have a, spend every year some money, you know, for Now, I should, I should uh, clarify that uh, Mr. Cuda is uh, from my hometown in Portugal, and we have a very long tradition of men and women associated with the sea. Um, and it's, it's funny because in the 80s, a lot of the Portuguese community that was here in New Bedford were from our area, uh, from in, from continental uh, Portugal. Um, and now it's a little bit different. The demographic has changed. Uh, but he, you don't go out to sea anymore, but he no. still, you, you know, he still has to pay for the bills. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's always good, you know, to get a chance to come down below and see the inner workings of a fishing boat. These things, I'm, well, how many, I know miles per gallon doesn't exist in this boat. Um, what is something like this waste? 600 gallons a day? Uh, uh, 600 gallons of a day. I don't think I waste oh, that in no. a year. Oh, no, 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 no. no, this is... This is, if it's less, it might be 450. Right, yeah. So this is 400, 450 a day. Yeah, 450. 450, and what, what about the other one before? I'm talking about the other yeah. one. Maybe this should be the same. Same no, certain amount of diesel fuel to burn to make a certain amount. Wow, so, you're so you're going to save gas with this that. You're going to be saving, right? Yeah, it's more more efficient. More efficient. All right, it's time for me to zip it up and get some good pictures. So I'm going to set up my little tripod here and see what I can come up with. Jack is removing the old coolant from the radiators which run under the boat. The deck boards have been removed which means there are big holes. Now 
I'm going to anticipate that he literally has to walk back over the frame, so I'm moving myself into position. It's important to move around even in these tight situations to see what other vantage points there are for some interesting photos, which put the viewer in a situation that might never see themselves in. I really wanted to get below the framework, so I stick my camera down there and hope that I end up with a good shot. It's a patience game. You need to be careful. I mean, you are trying to become invisible and falling in is the last thing you really want to do. But with a little patience and anticipation, that is the key to getting good photos that tell a story. The more comfortable everyone is with you, the more access you will have. I just climbed up the stairs to the wheelhouse and I find both of them, the owner and the captain, uh, speaking amongst themselves about the expenses that this new engine is going to um, incur on the bottom line. And I'm just looking for interesting vantage points. I'm looking um, at telling the story and if this means elevating myself, I'm going to look for something to climb onto. But I'm also going to grab that 50 millimeter that I had in my pocket and then I'm going to take a couple of shots of each one of them. It's, it's key to think about what makes an interesting photo. Sure, I could have just taken a photo of the owner sitting there, but uh, a storytelling photograph uh, has depth and in this case I'm just waiting for the captain to motion with his hands or do something that that gives me that strong foreground element that offsets the owner in the back and then I go to the other side and do the same thing and the 50 millimeter 1.4 is great because uh, because of the way that it treats depth of field beyond that Look for small details, little things that tell the story that give the overall project um, a greater sense of, of scale and emotion. And you can see uh, how much time I actually spent with them when I wasn't recording. But it's key to do less talking and more photographing. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you can subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it.